Hey, Peter Tomlinson here. Um, just making some review uh, videos to post on YouTube uh, for my classes at uh, Western Connecticut State University. Uh, hello, jazz and commercial piano people. Um, so we're going to start by going way back to the beginning of uh, fall of 2019 and things we covered then just so that everything is covered uh, sort of top to bottom. And uh, we started with this sheet called Seventh Chords in C. And if you need to go back and uh, print out this, I sh it's been emailed to everyone uh, as an attachment. So all the, all the videos that I'll be making uh, are in attachments um, that you can print out. So you should be referring to them all the, all the time for everything we're doing. So this one's called Seventh Chords in C. Uh, and we'll probably call this part one because there's quite a lot to cover on this sheet. The first part that we're going to talk about uh, are the chords that are diatonic to the major scale uh, and we're going to create seventh chords. In other words, they'll have the root of the chord, the third of the chord, the fifth of the chord, and the seventh of the chord because that's kind of a kind of a standard thing for jazz uh, chords. Usually we are at least adding the seventh to the chord every time. And as we play chords built on the different steps of the major scale, we're going to come across different types of chords because uh, they're going to have different intervals uh, applied to them. So let's get started. We're, going to, we're also going to give each of these chords Roman numerals, which is very handy for us. So we're going to start on the first step of the C major scale. And I'm going to play this uh, example an octave down with my left hand. It just sounds nice in this register. So I'm playing the C major seventh chord with my left hand. And so let's take a look at that for a moment. Um, the abbreviation will usually either be MAJ7, sometimes MA7, or sometimes the root name with a triangle seven. They all mean the same thing, a major seventh type chord. So get used to these different abbreviations. Okay, so uh, the C root in the key of C. That's followed by a major third built on the top of that. C to E is a major third. And if you're new to intervals and you need to count the number of half steps, uh, it's going to be four half steps. One, two, three, four. Okay? That creates the interval of a major third. It also happens to be diatonic to the key of C major. All right, then we're going to make the perfect fifth, which in this case is G. That'll be three half steps, one, two, three, above the third, okay? And as we're going upward, it's kind of easier to, to think up from the root, but once we get to the seventh, that I find is a little easier to think downward. So let's go up the octave from the C, and then come back down by a half step, and that is gonna be the interval that's gonna be our major seventh. So when you're looking for the seventh of the chord, compare it to the root and go downward. So uh, to make a major seventh chord, go down a half step from the, uh, from the interval of a major seventh. As we've said, uh, it's kind of a shame that some of the intervals have the same name as chords, but we can't really do anything about that now. It's kind of a little late to change that. So uh, the intervals in a, in a C major seventh chord the root, the major third, perfect fifth, and the major seventh, okay? And we call that the one chord in the key of C. We'll go up to the two chord in the key of C, all right? That's gonna be the D, or the second step of the scale. A different set of intervals, and we're gonna call this D minor seventh, uh, abbreviated M-I-N seven, or sometimes a small m, seven or very frequently a dash followed by a seventh the letter the root name followed by a dash and then the seventh okay in this case we have the root of the chord or d and then the next note up is a minor third that's f okay we're still just staying right in the key of c uh, then we have that perfect fifth again and in this case if we go up the octave and come downward to find our seventh the letter name will be C. So that is gonna be a whole step lower than the root, 
we call that interval the minor seventh. Again, it's, too, it's kind of too bad that the interval has the same name as the chord, but there you go. D, ma D minor seventh, it's the two chord, okay? It has, a, has that certain set of intervals. The three chord, coincidentally, also has all the same intervals as D minor seventh. So it's also a minor seventh type chord, okay? The root, the minor third, the perfect fifth, and the minor seventh, and has, so it'll have a different root, it'll be called E, but it's also called minor seventh. All right, we're marching on. Go to the four chord. Maybe you'll recognize that. It is also a major seventh chord. So the fourth step of the C, of this key of C is F. Major third, perfect fifth, major seventh. F major seven, okay? Uh, the five chord, you want to pay special attention to this one. This is called G seventh, and you'll see it um, written on your lead sheet as just the letter name followed by seven. Sometimes it could also be the letter name followed by a number bigger than seven, like nine or 13. We're going to consider those to be in the same family as G seventh. So here's the bare bones of a G seventh the root, the major third, the perfect fifth, but this time a minor seventh interval on the top. And you can hear how that chord has more, kind of more bite to it maybe, all right? Don't confuse your G seventh with G major seventh, okay? If we turn the seventh into a major seventh, right, there's that major seventh. No, that's wrong. The five chord is a dominant seventh chord. All right, the letter name just followed by a seventh. Think of those intervals. The sixth chord is also a minor seventh chord. Same intervals as the two chord and the three chord. The seventh step is called B minor seven flat five. Here's the root, the minor third, but then instead of that nice solid interval, that, the perfect fifth. This one's got the flat five. Much more active kind of sound to it. All right. B, D, F, A, B minor seventh flat five. It's got a nickname also. You might see the letter name, in this case, B, followed by a circle with a diagonal line going through it. That would be uh, called B half diminished. Two, name, two ways of saying the same thing. B minor seven flat five or B half diminished. One more note chord you should know about is the diminished chord, okay? And we can get to a diminished chord very easily from here just by lowering the A down a half step to G sharp. Now we have a chord that's all made out of minor thirds. And if we invert it, the intervals still say minor thirds. Okay, so that's a diminished chord, and that's represented as the, the root name followed just by a circle. Not a circle with a dash through it, but just the circle. In this case, you might call it B diminished. Okay, so there are those chords. Uh, the second line gives you the same chords inverted, so the seventh is on the bottom, not on the top. I just included that because it's kind of a nice sound. Um, another thing that you can do, an exercise I recommend everybody do, is start with your one chord, okay? You know how to make a C major seventh chord. Now this is really an interesting little project. We can lower this, the, the B, or the seventh, down to a minor seventh, and now we've created a C seventh chord. Here's a C major seventh chord. Here's a C seventh chord. Now if we lower the third step, E down to E flat, it becomes C minor seventh. If we lower the fifth step, G down to G flat, C minor seven flat five. If we lower the B flat down to A, now it's a C diminished. 
And these are what we kind of generally called the five basic jazz chord types. Major seven, dominant seven, minor seven, minor seven flat five, diminished. A little different than the, uh, the way classical musicians categorize their different kinds of chords, okay? And I think the basic reason for that is that we always add the seventh to our chords. Okay, so in the next part of the video, we'll be getting into um, uh, turning these chords into chord voicings and using smooth voice leading to create a 2-5-1 chord progression, which is really common and standard in jazz tunes. All right, see you then.